Good morning, New Calvary Baptist Church. We are excited and elated that you have decided to join us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 24, verses 7 through 10, and it says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Lift them up, ye ancient doors. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God strong and mighty. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that we serve an awesome God. A God who gets all of the glory. A God who is deserving of all of our praise. Despite the week that we've had, we serve an awesome God. Come on and put your lights up, put your hearts up, and come on and celebrate our God. Let us pray our prayer of invocation. Gracious God, how we love you. Gracious God, how we appreciate all of the ways that you have made for us. All of the doors that you have opened, God. And when we thought, God, that it was over, God, when we thought that we were ready to throw in the towel, God, you reached down and picked us up. And so, God, we thank you for your keeping power this morning. God, we thank you for your unmerited favor. God, we thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. God, we just stop by to say thank you because we understand that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, God, we don't know where we will be. God, we almost slipped. We almost fainted. We almost fell. But your grace came along and rescued us. And so, God, we're grateful. God, we appreciate you. God, we marvel at you this morning because there is none like you, God. So in this moment, God, we thank you for Reverend Harris, God, and how you bless him God how you anointed him for such a time as this so God in this worship experience bless us mightily God that somebody might be healed somebody might be set free and somebody might be delivered oh God we need you like never before so pour out your glory on us God and receive our worship this morning God we ask that you be pleased with our worship be pleased with our praise from the living room to the bedroom God we worship you from the car God we worship you wherever we find ourselves in this morning God we lift up our hands and we exalt you because you are a wonderful God and grateful to be praised for every mountain that you brought us over for every valley that you seen us through for this God we give you praise we're grateful God and we honor you right where you are right where you may where you are this morning go ahead and give God some praise Send up your hearts, send up your lights. Come on, you carry back this church. Let's worship God together this morning. Hallelujah, how grateful we are to worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. How good it is to come together and give God praise and glory for all that the Lord has done. For we declare in this moment that God is good, not some of the time, not most of the time, but God is good all of the time. And there is reason to worship the Lord. There is reason to give God praise. So on this morning, we just want you to put your lights up, put your hearts up, and declare that God is good. Can you say today that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be? I dare you to just look back on where the Lord has brought you from, and you will declare that God is worthy of this praise. God is worthy of us coming and sharing in this moment. So we are grateful today. We're glad today because this is the day that the Lord has made and we have come to rejoice, to worship, and to be glad. Amen. How grateful we are to worship and share with you on today. We are grateful for you sharing with us in this virtual worship experience. We want to tell you thank you. We want to tell you how grateful we are. There are a whole bunch of things you could have done with your quarantine Sunday morning, but we are thankful that God has led you to this place just to worship and to share with us, to our new Calvary family. 
and our new Calvary friends, how grateful we are for your presence this morning. We hope that you have already been blessed by this outstanding choir, this outstanding musical aggregation that just blesses our spirit this morning. And as we come together, we look forward to continuing to grow and to share and see what God has in store for us on this Sunday morning. In other words, beloved, good morning. It is a good morning to be uh, in the presence, in the presence of the Lord. Listen, we got a lot to do today, so we want to make sure that we get uh, on track and do what we need to do as we celebrate uh, today, as we celebrate uh, our executive pastor. Amen. As we celebrate today, amen, our executive pastor, five years of celebrating and sharing as we have worked together. He's been here longer than that, but he has been installed as our executive pastor, and this is his fifth year in that position, and we're going to talk about that in just a little while, but we are grateful for the Reverend Byron L. Harris. Amen. Grateful for him and his gift, and we are looking forward to celebrating and sharing with him on today. I just want to give you the news of New Calvary today, if you can. Um, just want to let you know that uh, we are continuing to share and to prepare ourselves to present our virtual Ma'afa experience with you. That will take place on February the 7th. That is Sunday at 5 p.m. Listen, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, but don't be scared. It's only going to be an hour, only going to be an hour of presentation. So uh, February the 7th at 5 p.m. We want you to just tune in. Um, the address, the information, the ID is on your screen. It's posted it on your screen along with the graphic so that you can have that information. If you need that information, we'll get it to you. But just sign on, share, uh, and, 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 and in that Zoom presentation as we present uh, some places in our Ma'afa history as we work and partner with Incarn Ministries, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, as we continue uh, to just share and to remember the legacy as we honor in this African American History Month our story of what God has done with us and through us from Africa to America. What will take place uh, is there will be a live presentation uh, at the end of it uh, for a minute. And we're, we're grateful for those persons who share with the New Calvary family uh, and friends of New Calvary who will share in that presentation of I Care, our spoken word piece that will take place at the end of that. And so we want you to tune in and support that and to be encouraging to those who work so hard, so faithfully and so diligently. I believe you're going to see some surprises, amen, in uh, that Zoom presentation and that spoken word presentation I believe it's going to be a blessing to you so make sure that you tune in what's going to happen what this will mean is that we will have uh, we will move we're going to move our Bible study I know um, moving our Bible study from Wednesday to Thursday because Thursday February the 4th on February the 4th um, we will share um, on uh Set at 7 p.m. on that same ID uh, as I will be having a conversation about violence uh, in America and the spirit uh, uh, and the wounds of the spirit in terms of the African-American context and the African-American experience. And so we're going to be talking about um, how violence is as American as apple pie. Uh, and we will be talking about that, but talking about what it does for the spirit and to the spirit of African-American people in this country and how we operate with the sense of resiliency and so uh, that will be on Thursday at 7 p.m. same meeting ID same password so make sure that you sign in and then that Sunday on the 7th we will celebrate together uh, in that Ma'afa presentation at 5 p.m. and so we look forward uh, to a very rich and full week as we come together. Uh, we have some new exciting news as we talk about doing church differently. We are blessed that our ministry that has been formerly known as or also known as our prison ministry uh, is getting a makeover and so we are calling that ministry the family advocating ministry or FAM, F-A-M. So if you are interested, amen, in being a part of the FAM, you want to be a part of the FAM, please uh, give a call uh, to the church. It is going to do the same uh, important kinds of ministry. It will also lead the way 
for implementing our church-wide food pantry here at New Calvary Baptist Church. I know a lot of you have been asking and inquiring about that. We will. That will be under the FAM ministry again, and that will be underway. If you are interested in being part of the family advocating ministry, please uh, give a call. Uh, you know Reverend Mack will find something for you to do, uh, but you can call the church office to sign up for that, and we would love to have those to share and be a part of that uh, ministry here at New Calvary. Uh, we also want to just remind you and thank you very, very much, oh so much for your giving and for you being faithful in your giving and your tithes and offerings. So please make sure that you are sending those to 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard uh, in Norfolk, Virginia, 23504. Uh, you can mail those or you can get on GiveLify and make New Calvary your favorite place to give uh, and be a blessing to the New Calvary ministry. We have been blessed since we have gone virtual. We have been blessed by people all over over the country who have partnered with New Calvary and we appreciate you uh, and we continue to implore those family and friends of New Calvary to continue to be faithful in your giving and sharing in this moment. We also want to thank all of those who uh, continue to like and subscribe uh, to all of our pages and to all of our um, social media outlets and so we are grateful for you for doing that please continue to just like and subscribe to us on facebook like and subscribe to us on instagram at new calvary norfolk va and like and subscribe to us on uh, Facebook uh, and YouTube as well. We are so grateful and thank you for all of those spreading the word. We are growing in leaps and bounds uh, in terms of our viewership and so we are just very, very thankful and so that we take that to mean that God is indeed pleased and up to something with what we're doing here at the New Calvary Church and uh, please also know that our church office hours are Tuesday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That is Tuesday to Friday 9 a.m. Uh, to 2 p.m. Uh, in our in this COVID uh, atmosphere, those are the hours we are setting. So please be mindful as you conduct business uh, in um, throughout the week. We also want to thank all of those, and we are incredibly grateful uh, for what God is doing as we continue to talk about what justice and advocacy means uh, it through the eyes of the Black Church. I love uh, some conversation that I was having with some individuals the other day that was sharing. They said there was a difference about a church that is black and the black church there is a difference that it of indifference of churches that are black, but the, the, the black church. The black church has meaning uh, and speaks to the issues of community, um, and the black the church the church that is black speaks to uh, worship um, with uh, certain ideas with just black face. And so we thank God that we continue uh, to be the black church. We continue to be the black church and do what the black church needs to do as we become advocates for those who need it. And I say all that to say. Uh, is that this uh, on yesterday just yesterday uh, we were blessed uh, with folks who came out to military uh, square military circle uh, and got uh, their va their first vaccine doses that we New Calvary partnered with Satara Norfolk General Hospital uh, in terms of getting vaccines uh, to our members who were 65 and over and those who had pre-existing conditions and so we are incredibly grateful uh, to Iris Lundy for helping us and partnering with that we had floods of phone calls all week folks who wanted to come out and sign up and we're grateful for that but not only that we are continuing to partner with um, Norfolk Sentara and we are going to be a vaccination site. We are going to be a site that is going to be vaccinating those when their time comes up. And so we're grateful for that. This is the stuff that we're talking about doing as we talk about being relevant to the community and reaching out uh, and making sure that we have an impact on those who uh, are a part of our community. We understand what it is to be village. And I'm very, very grateful uh, for all of those who have partnered and worked faithful into doing that. And one of those people who has been faithful and working hard and diligent and all of that has been our favorite executive pastor, uh, the Reverend Byron L. Harris. Uh, he has been diligent in so many other things. And you all know uh, that you have heard his voice and seen him move and seen him operate in so many different places. And there will be tribute to him uh, in this service as we continue just to share and give thanks uh, for him. But this is an opportunity, and I want to just make this appeal to you, that you make this opportunity to be a blessing to him. We want to make this opportunity 
opportunity that if you can to please be a blessing to him. We, I want to implore you uh, to bless him uh, for being the executive pastor that helps to make things run around here and keep things flowing. And so we're grateful for him. And I'm asking you to show your appreciation. Here's why. Um, because the Bible does say that a person is worth their hire. Amen. The Bible says that somebody is worth the gift of the anointing that they have, that they should be recognized. And that doesn't always mean monetary, but it does mean that they should be recognized and appreciated for who they are. Here's the second reason. The second reason he's in school. The second reason he's in school, he is working on his doctorate at Seattle University in pastoral leadership. He's working on his doctor of ministry. And so y'all know what it is to be in school. Y'all know what it is to get that hustle on. So why don't you just be a blessing to him? You can give uh, and share with him on Givelify. There, if you go on Givelify, there is a uh, 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 a category where you can give to the EP anniversary. It says EP. EP is for executive pastor. EP anniversary. You can give there. You can give on his cash app. His cash app is dollar sign Byron Harris. Um, and you can be a blessing to him uh, that way, or you could just uh, uh, mail that or send that to the church, 800 East Virginia Beach Boulevard here in the city of Norfolk. So be a blessing to him any way you can. Reach out to him. Put it in the likes. Put it in the comment section. Just let him know that you appreciate him and you're grateful uh, for the work that he has done. We, we This is five years. He got five on it this time. He got five on it this year. And so we are celebrating him and we want to continue to be a blessing to him. And to that end, as we continue to move forward, I'm just going to give this uh, introduction down. We're going to move forward in this worship service. His uh, good friend, his buddy, uh, is going to come and celebrate the word with us today. Uh, he comes in the form of the Reverend Hugo J. Morrison. Amen. He is a man. Pastor Hugo J. Morrison. Pastor Morrison uh, is a brother beloved and a friend of Reverend Harris, and he is uh, a graduate of Old Dominion University. Uh, he is a graduate of Regent uh, University with a Master of Divinity uh, in pastoral leadership. He is um, pastoral theology. He is the pastor, senior pastor, leader, and teacher uh, of the Union uh, United Church of Christ right there on Gulf Street. Uh, and he is a beloved pastor of the people. He has been there since 2017. Uh, he is a faithful member and diligent member of the United Church of Christ, but he's got Pentecostal proclivities. He's working. He's a worshiper. That's what I mean. He's a worshiper. That when you understand what Pentecostalism is, you understand its sense of worship. He is a worshiper, and he is a believer in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He is married uh, to uh, Sister Tanika Foreman, Tanika Owens, uh, and they are a, a love, life, and ministry together. And so we have been blessed by this selection, and I am excited to what God is going to do as he preaches through um, this messenger of God. And so we're going to prepare our hearts and minds as he comes and delivers the word to us uh, after we have our prayer and our choir selection. But we want to right now just prepare our hearts and minds for prayer in this particular moment. There are so many things that are going on in this world, beloved, so many things that we can talk about, so many things that need prayer in, in the public square and in our private lives. So many things that we can talk about, so many things that we need to address and need to understand. So many places in our lives where we simply see, say to the Lord, God, I'm asking you to lead me in this place so that I might find a place of understanding. We're asking God to touch and heal certain people, members of the New Calvary family who need your prayers, beloved. They need your prayers going through COVID-19, going through other uh, physical ailments, going through losses uh, in their own lives. We are asking right now that you would continue to pray for Helen Willis as she lost her sister-in-law. Just remember those who have continued to go through loss in this season. What an incredible time um, that people are finding to grieve and to also be uh, separated. What it is to, to grieve and to be separated. And so we want to pray for those who need it. And so in this moment, if there are people in the comment section that you want to leave, uh, prayer concerns that you want to in interject, please do so at this time so that our virtual minister uh, can acknowledge and lift you up in prayer uh, specifically as we go uh, to the throne of grace in a word of prayer. We ask that you would pray as we seek the Lord's face together. Gracious and eternal God, how we love you and how grateful we are 
We thank you, God, for all that you have done. Thank you, God, for the ways that you have made. We thank you, God, for this time, this day that you've allowed us to come to worship. Grateful for the opportunity to just wake up this morning. Grateful for the opportunity and the time that we can come together, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. But somebody needs to worship today. Somebody needs to hear a word from the Lord. Somebody needs to be encouraged, God. And so we are waiting with great anticipation in this particular moment. We've already been blessed just to be together in the fellowship is blessing enough. We're grateful, God, and be reminded that we are still your children. Grateful, God, for this day that you have allowed us to see. Grateful for a reasonable portion of health and strength. Grateful, God, for blood running warm in our veins. Grateful for the opportunity to simply acknowledge that it's time to recognize your, your glory and you, that you are worthy of the honor. God, as we come uh, together, we ask, God, that you would just simply remember not just the New Calvary Baptist Church, but all churches that are open in your name. Grateful to acknowledge and recognize, God, uh, all those believers who continue to just trust in you even in the most difficult of times. We pray, God, for every family. We pray, God, for every household. Pray, God, for everyone who needs covering and who needs protection. We pray, God, for those who are asking for direction. Pray for those who need healing. We are praying, God, for the family and the body of believers, God, who are simply saying, I'm trying to find my way the best I can, and I'm trusting Lord that you haven't failed me yet and you'll continue to lead me in the right direction God continue in this moment in this worship service that those who are going through financial struggles you might find relief for them we pray God for those who are under pressure of anxiety and depression who are under stresses God that they cannot express that you would simply touch them right now God in the name of Jesus we pray, God, that you would just continue to bless us as we continue to move forward. That as the future seems so unknown, that as the steps that we take can sometimes seem so unsure, God, we are trusting and believing that you haven't brought us this far to leave us. So God, help us with everything that we have to continue to be faithful. Help us to trust you, God, Help us to walk with you, God, in ways that we have not yet seen, yet realized, or understand. But we know, God, if we just put our hand in your hand, you'll lead us to the places where we need to go. God, we're asking you this morning that you would bless this preacher. Continue to touch him, God, and anoint him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. That, God, you would just continue to pour into him a word for your people that we might be blessed on this day. And that we might continue to run on just a little while longer. God, we continue to pray for this nation. That as uh, there are people who are giving misinformation and the world seems so turned upside down. God, give us a grounding that helps us to walk right. Give us a grounding that helps us to understand our focus. Give us a grounding that helps us to realize and know, God, uh, who you are in light of everything that's going on in the world. Folks have turned away. Folks have moved from so many different places and so many different perspectives. But help us not to forget that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And those that choose to forget, those that choose to walk away, that they might be reminded that they have not made it this far without the Lord on their side. So thank you, God. We thank you for an executive pastor. Thank you for five years of faithful service. Thank you for his work. Thank you for his diligence. Thank you for his faithfulness. And God, we're asking that you would continue to gird him up. Continue, God, to bless him. Continue to cover him with the hedge of protection. God, whatever you have for him, God, let it be so that he would continue to run trusting you with it all. For he knows the story and he knows the journey. So God, continue to just let him trust you. Let him understand that there is a church family that loves and embraces him in a mighty way. And God, we'll be careful to pray for each and every member of the New Calvary Family Church. 
those who are leading and going through situations right now those who are finding it hard in the struggle those who are trying to find their way God we pray for our neighbor right now and we believe God that you'll bring them to the other side of the mountain and so God we don't wait for the battle to be over to say thank you but we say thank you right now we rejoice in you right now we appreciate you right now we give you glory right now for it is in the wonderful, marvelous, and matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Come on, let's receive this choir as they bless us uh, in uh, celebration. And after the choir blesses us, and after our presentation, we will be blessed by this pastor, the Reverend Hugo and Jay Morris. And let us receive it. Levon Harris, born February 5th, 1977. I have loved you from the days I've laid eyes on you. And you know, you didn't have to be a star baby to be in my show. Byron, we are so excited to share this joyous, auspicious occasion with you as your fifth anniversary as the executive pastor of the New Calvary Baptist Church. Byron, I remember the day that you were called into the ministry. That night I was up in my office doing some work and it was late at night. And my spirit, I had you on my mind um, that night. I, it, it was a good feeling. But the next day we were on our way to grandmommy's house in Surrey and you called us in Suffolk and you let us know that you've been called into the ministry. And I wasn't even, I wasn't even alarmed by your call into the ministry. You've always had a calling on your life, whether it was singing, inspiring people motivating people byron we want to say we love you from the depths of our hearts we truly love you um i can't imagine this world without you we love you byron god bless we love, we love you. you this is the day the lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it this is a joyous day when we come to celebrate with the new calvary family the Fifth, and fifth pastoral and fifth executive pastoral anniversary of our son, Byron. Joyous it is. I'm so, we are so proud of Byron on this day. And you, when you're preparing something for something like this, you often think, what can I say? How do I say it? And invite you into our thoughts and minds. But we simply want to say that we are very proud of Byron. He has, he has tra lived in several parts of the United States, but he's always stayed dedicated to his love for Christ. And that's what I admire about him. He is genuinely a person of obedience, truth, and patience. And he has taught me through our relationship that it's okay to laugh. And so Byron, with that said, mama and daddy just want to say to you, congratulations on your five years here at New Calvary Baptist Church as the executive pastor. We love you, we admire you, we often pray for you, and we thank God for you. There is nothing you could say or do that would stop us from loving you. Our son, we are so proud of. God bless you, mommy and daddy. Reverend Byron LaVon Harris. Do you know what today is? It's your anniversary. And so my brother, I send you love and light and peace and power all the way from Richmond, Virginia. And as I said to you five years ago on your first pastoral anniversary, continue to move from good to great. You show us how not to rest on our past, but to show up in the present, being our best selves and that you fight to the finish by always being your authentic self. And so I celebrate you on today. As the words of Ubuntu say, we are because you are, and you are because God is. And so may God continue to bless you to do the work that your soul must have, always giving us the best that you've got. 
I celebrate you along with the people of the New Calvary Baptist Church of Norfolk, Virginia, because we know all roads lead to New Calvary. God bless you, my brother. Happy anniversary. And I hope to see you real soon. I love you. B, what's up, man? It's your big brother, Reggie Williams, man. Listen, I am so happy, so elated, so ecstatic uh, that we are getting the chance to celebrate your fifth executive pastoral anniversary, man. You are a gift and a jewel and a gem. Um, and you are such uh, an amazing, an amazing administrator, an amazing uh, minister of the gospel, an amazing preacher, uh, just an amazing man, man, even though you're a Q, but you know, we'll, we'll chalk that up. The Lord does still forgive. Uh, anyway, though, man, listen, happy anniversary. Enjoy yourself. Um, we are grateful at the First Baptist Church of University Park for not only the new Calvary family, not only uh, for the crew uh, that comes up, but uh, also grateful for you, man. Wish you the well, wish you well, wish you the best. Uh, and pray God's blessings upon you, man. Love you, big bro. One. Hey, new Calvary. I am so delighted to take this opportunity to wish my big brother, the wonderful, amazing, dynamic Reverend Byron, a happy fifth executive pastoral anniversary. I love you, big brother. I miss you so much. I can't wait for us to be together again. But I know and the Bible tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. So I'm excited about all the things that God is doing in your life. May he continue to bless you and keep you as you delight in his way and that you would continue to do all that God is calling and creating you to be. I love you. See you soon. Hallelujah. Now come on and give God praise all over this house. And we're standing here only because he is God of all. Hallelujah. Come on, he moves mountains. Hallelujah. And he is wonderful. We celebrate the magnificent, wonderful name of our Jesus, who is the Christ. Hallelujah. And I'm standing here only because he made a way. Hallelujah. We thank him. Hallelujah. Because he's our healer. He's our strong deliverer. And he is wonderful. Come on, why don't you celebrate God right where you are? Throw some hearts on the screen. Throw some lights. Come on and begin to celebrate God. Why don't you extend yourself to the Lord right in your home? Hallelujah. Because he is the unknowing our seeing wonderful God. Hallelujah. And he is a wonder even in our soul. Hallelujah. Let me take this opportunity to thank. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Small and Lady Small for sharing this pulpit with me and Green for being fine people in the Lord. Hallelujah. We love them. Amen. Your friend from around the corner. Amen. It is so good to see you. Amen. This morning as well. Let me congratulate and Reverend Byron L. Harris. Hallelujah. Let me make sure I say that L in there. L. Harris on his fifth anniversary as executive pastor. Amen. We salute you, sir, and pray that God will continue to bless your ministry. Hallelujah. As you journey on, we thank God for friendship and we thank God for fellowship. Amen. Hallelujah. That's my friends. So Y'all treat them well. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a phone call away if you don't. Hallelujah. And I do crazy when I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to be here and to share this opportunity. Hallelujah. I won't keep you long, but Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at the 14th verse and reading through the 15th verse from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Philippians, the third chapter, beginning at verse 14 and reading to 15, says these words. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of these things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Verse 14 says, I press on toward the goal. Hallelujah. If we can hang this text around the thought, the journey. I want to talk about today is the journey. Hallelujah. That's all I want to talk about today is the journey. A praise should erupt right there. And you not only survived it, but you have championed the journey. 
while many approach this text with looking for the prize, I just want to walk through the journey. If this was revival, I preach the joy that awaits. If I were giving a lecture, I'll entitle it Enduring the Process. But since it's the executive pastor's anniversary, I just want to talk about the journey. Yeah, running the recesses of your mind and skimming the last five years of ministry in this one place, I am sure you can testify like Brother Charles Dickens as he opened his novel entitled The Tale of Two Cities. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. Many of us in the first 30 days of this new year can make that same declaration. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times. Since it's pastor's anniversary, y'all don't mind if I just preach to the pastor this morning. After experiencing personal losses, experiencing the transitions from baby dedications, performing nuptials, extending the right hand of fellowship, comforting grieving families, sending folk out, receiving new additions, witnessing projects grow and be successful while others, nev while others never got up off the ground like you thought they would, while experiencing church membership growth and decline it was the worst of times it was the best of times having come to your own personal trauma and opposition rising against you halted between two opinions of whether to keep pressing or to quit prematurely when your mind tells you to fumble the ball but your inner man your spirit tells you to guard it like your life depends upon it often times preaching and witnessing victory show up in others lives but it seemed the more you preach the more hell you attracted and with fake friends showing fake love to you all up in your face. I, I know that doesn't happen here at New Calvary, uh, uh, but can I just tell, talk about it for a moment? Uh, hallelujah, since it is the executive pastor's anniversary, you ought not wait till January to start celebrating him. You you ought to every now and again pull his coattail uh, and put something in his hand. You ought, you ought to every now and again throw him an appreciation show, send a card away, tell him that you're thinking about him, that, that, you're, that you're with him and that you're praying and covering him. And don't say it properly privately and can't stand behind it publicly yeah I'm just talking about who I'm talking about New Calvary, I know, I know this doesn't happen here, but just in case somebody slipped in unaware, don't y'all all, don't you all be like them fake friends. In fact, don't you wait until this moment just to celebrate the EP every now and again. You ought to celebrate them when there is no anniversary going on. You ought to celebrate them when there is no fire to extinguish. You ought to slow them down between meetings and say, I just want to pray with you. Keep his heart encouraged and don't say it privately when you won't stand behind it publicly. This journey you've set, on, you've set out on is often equivalent to running a race. Running a good race requires focus, physical exertion, and perseverance. Running a race means you're in it for the long haul. From start to finish, you must lay all distractions aside and you remain focused on the one thing. That one thing is moving forward and finishing the race. You don't look back, you don't turn around, and most importantly, you can't quit. God is not only concerned with you obtaining the prize, but God is also concerned with the process. God, who watches over us, is present at every turn. God Guiding your journey while guarding your prize. Guiding your every footstep while guarding the finish line. Guiding your faith while guarding your focus. God is with you at every turn. This isn't one of my main points this morning, but it's certainly worth noting right here. In order to be successful on this journey, you must make up your mind. Hallelujah. I dare somebody to drop that right there on the screen in the comments. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that I'm sticking with God. Come hell or high water, I'm sticking with God. Doesn't matter what my neighbor do, I'm sticking with God. Doesn't matter what mama and them do, I'm sticking with God. You got to make up in your mind that I'm sticking with God. Might be suspended somewhere between grief and groaning, but I'm sticking with God. Might be somewhere suspended between hurt and heaviness, but I'm sticking with God. Maybe suspended suspended between conflict and courage, uh, passion and pride, uh, but you got to make up in your mind uh, that I'm sticking
sticking with God? Don't you choose to remain with stuck people? Or don't you choose to remain stuck with still people? Who are still people, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. Still people are those people that are living in the past. Still talking about what they did last summer. Still rehearsing what they did last night. Still talking about how it used to be. Don't you remain stuck with still people? Still people are those who are whining and complaining about the things that happened to them. Those who are still making no effort but expecting maximum reward. The journey is calling you and you must continue to press. Journey is calling. Hallelujah. When folks slip in here, suspended between hunger and healing, the journey is calling. When folk are stuck between blinded eyes and looking for healing the journey is calling when they're stuck between dancing and despair the journey is calling when their hunger their hunger pains are louder than our hallelujahs the journey is calling can you make your hallelujah mean something when I have not eaten in the last five days can you make your shundo mean something when I'm sleeping on a park bench on church street I don't have no help right through here the journey is calling calling you. That's why you can't remain stuck because the journey is calling you to press. I know, I know, I know, I know life has hurt you so, dished you some blows that you weren't expecting and this mantra of I can't breathe is more than a notion, more than a hashtag and has leveled its weight on your shoulders while attempting to figure out how do we defend the weak, care for the feeble, reach the loss, the least and the less while keeping ministry cutting edge. I know the journey calls you to this place of perpetual pressing which begs the question how do you find joy in the journey? Can I give you the answer? There is an answer. Uh, how do you find joy in the journey? How is it possible then preacher that I find joy in this journey? Footnote number one says you gotta take your stance. Hallelujah on this journey there may be others running alongside of you but there is only one race to be concerned with and that is your race you may even encounter some opposing forces along this race but you want to take your stands and run your race that simply means you don't have time to be meddling in my race you don't have time to be in my lane you gotta mind your own lane you don't have time to figure out what Pastor B is doing. You ought to know that everything he does is moving the mission forward. Everything that he says is about the greater purpose and the greater good so that God can be glorified. You don't have time to be in my lane causing crashes and stinking up the yard. We've got work to do. As long as there's hurt, there is work to be done. That's why you got to take your stand by making up your mind your race may differ from my race and my race may differ from yours but this race that we're running has been predetermined and designed for you to win hallelujah you ought to testify to somebody on your screen be a virtual evangelist right there and drop it in the comments and tell them this race was designed for you to win in other words I always win hallelujah if you're going to press on towards the goal that God has for you and find joy in the journey, you must make God's goal your own. Yeah, you must make God's goal your own. It's there in our text. Paul doesn't claim that he is perfect, but rather that he is pressing. Hallelujah. Can I stop and cut that up real quick? Hallelujah. I may not have obtained, hallelujah, the great success, but the one thing I do do is I continue to press. Hallelujah. I may not be a perfect person, but the one thing I will do is continue to press. Hallelujah. That ought to be your resolve today. 
day that while I may not dot every I or cross every T, I'm determined that I will press on. Hallelujah. Paul claims that I'm not perfect, but I am pressing. He realizes that he is still on the journey and that he still has a long way to go. Any perfect people with us this morning? I don't think so. I know I'm not, but I'm working on getting there. And that's Paul's point of the matter. Get on your mark. Align your goals with God's goals for your life and be honest about where you are. Hallelujah. You've been to the stadium and you've seen athletes run. You've seen athletes race. Everyone runs, but only one wins. You ought to tell your neighbor to get on your mark. I've got to go. I've got to push on here but there may be some dips and twists that you must dig through but in order to own the track you must inspect the area every now and again I'm no runner but I know what runners do when they're running a race they get there a little early Reverend Parker to make sure that they have time to inspect the track to make sure a couple of days before the actual race they'll show up and they'll sprint a maybe a meter or run a hundred yard dash to make sure that the wind hits them at the right angle and at the right moment and the right time as they turn the corner they understand there's either going to be an opposing wind or a wind that's going to help them and if it's an opposing wind then I must run on the outside of the track but if there's a wind that's going to push me further I've learned that I must run on the inside of the lane that I might get to the finish line that's all I want you to know is that every now and again you might have to inspect the track to make sure that you understand there might be some hurdles but I believe I'll press on there might be some dips that I've got to endure but I believe I'll press on there might be an obstacle in my way but I've learned how to press on anyhow anybody pressing the old church used to say it like this I'm pressing on the upward way no heights I'm gaining every day still praying as I onward bound now I plant my feet on higher ground y'all didn't mean to go there early but I've got to press on and see what the end's going to be why because the journey is calling me if you're going to find joy in this journey you must learn how to trust your or uh, to trust your trainer or training not only do you have to take a stance but footnote number two says you've got to trust your training every victory and every loss was about the training process every setback over these five years and every setup every heartbreak every low place every trial and every temptation was all about the training process. You must trust your training. Though Satan should buffet, though trial should be great, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarding your helpless estate and has shed his own blood for your soul. I've decided that I'm sticking with God. All I want you to know is that in this race that every opponent you see won't be one from the outside side so when rejection shows up in the ministry you've got to trust your training when persecution takes residence at your own address you got to trust your training and all the good that you've done is spoken evil of you got to trust your training when 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 you aren't complimented compensated or celebrated make up in your mind that I'm staying with God. Why? Because I trust my training. When they don't call my name, I've still got to press on because some folk run this race for gold medals and they tarnish. Some folk run this race for medallions that fade. Some folk run this race to be applauded and exploded.
it before men but I showed up to remind you that you are running this race because there's a journey that you must endure and this journey will produce a far more exceeding reward that is greater than gold greater than money greater than fame greater than them knowing your name this journey that you're on is far more exceeding than it shows up in the earth realm pastor byron when obstacles show up on your track or come in your life when friends forsake you and try to shovel the dirt over life over your head when family members turn their backs on you when brothers and sisters in the church refuse to help you and it seems as if no one understands or agrees keep a forward focus at all times rid yourself of all distractions hear me new calvary and keep on moving forward keep on moving forward press strain if you have to but keep on moving forward and don't look back which leads me to footnote number three footnote number three says if you're gonna find joy in the journey then you must tabernacle with the trainer not only not only do you have to take a stand not only do you have to trust your training but you also have to tabernacle with the trainer I'm going to my seat in a moment but while I'm here can I tell you that God has called you to be faithful and he will take care of the success every time somebody comes across the thresholds of this door and they are fed it's because we've spent time with the trainer every time somebody stumbles in this house they help or ask for bill assistance they they're met because we have tabernacled with the trainer every time that somebody on the street corner has an opportunity to witness the real love of Christ is another is another victory in your cap because we've tabernacled with our trainer I'm going now but can I tell you a story as I go to my seat Derek Redmond told a story about a day that changed his life he was a 400 meter record holder in Britain Redmond was at the peak of his athletic abilities on the day he took the starting the starting position at the starting line during the Barcelona semifinals in 1992 his father was there to watch his Olympian son compete in this race everything seemed fine things were going as planned but during the run something happened and things were no longer normal all I came to tell you is that sometimes in this race things will look like they're going fine and all of a sudden something will catch you from the blind side don't you fear don't you worry God is still in control got everything in the palm of his hand got the whole wide world the little bitty baby the baby's mama and even the daddy's drama got it all all in his hands don't you fear and don't you fret because God's got it all under control Derek Derek Redman tells this story from a first person account he says when I took my place on the starting line I felt great I felt good there were no injuries in sight but as I was running around the track all of a sudden there was an excruciating pain and later came a pop he says I knew that sound because I heard the sound before I was familiar with what that meant because I've had the experience of pulling my hamstring before Derek says because I didn't want to quit because I didn't want to give up because I'm not a quitter I, well, I got back 
on my feet managed to hobble along a couple of more feet before then I fell down again but I got back up he said I was determined to run this race by this time all of the medics were on the track trying to convince him to stop all the doctors and officials were coming onto the track trying to get him to stop but I wasn't having none of that he says I don't like to quit and I must get to the finish line just then he noticed that somebody else was on the track with him and so there he found his help on the track all I came to tell you is that when life throws your curveball you're not alone because somebody else is with you his daddy was now on the track with him goes up to his son you can stop now you have nothing else to prove you're already a champion you have nothing else to prove can I put a dime in the meter and tell you that you are a champion and you don't have anything else to prove every day you show up you're a champion every day you turn your key and it opens the door you're a champion every day you show up while others are quitting you're a champion and you have nothing else to prove who am I preaching to out there every day you get up out of your bed while others succumb to their depression while others succumb to their vices you are a champion I know it's heavy now but I'm a champion and I have nothing else to prove you want to just trust your trainer tabernacle with your trainer daddy is on the track with him and so daddy daddy finally convinces Derek to slow down and walk Derek tries walking but his footing is unsure and so daddy then says throw your arms around my shoulder daddy gets up under his shoulder takes the weight of his child and they manage to get to the finish line what are you saying preacher when the weight bears down so heavy and you don't know how you're gonna make it you wanna just lean on daddy you wanna just put your weight on daddy you wanna just lean on daddy when I wanna quit when I wanna quit I've learned how to lean on daddy why because there's a press this one thing I do I press on I can't quit now I won't give up now but I press on may not know everything but I know this one thing forgetting those things which are behind me I press now I press forward toward the prize so if when you give the best of your service telling the dying world the same has come be not dismayed when men don't believe you he'll understand he'll understand he'll understand he'll understand and say well done the journey the journey the journey is calling you maybe heavy sometimes don't you work for the prize huh. you work for the applause of God because the journey awaits you want to thank the man of God who delivered such a powerful message to my brother and my friend. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Morrison. Thank you so much. It is that time in the worship experience that you may want to tabernacle with the trainer. You may be at the point of your race that you desire to have that focus, to be able to run your race, to see what the end is going to be. And so we ask and we offer that relationship to you now. So you may decide that you want to be a part of the New Calvary Baptist Fellowship. And we just ask that you type that into the comment section and our virtual minister will minister to you now in a special way.
You may also contact our church office at 757-627-1269 and let our administrator know that you wish to become in fellowship with the New Calvary Baptist Church. Pastor Small, our senior pastor, would love to be your pastor and we would love to fellowship and welcome you in to the beloved body of Christ. To God be the glory for all that our eyes have seen and ears have heard and we just want to take that opportunity to extend that to you right now. You may be saying, I already know who the my redeemer is. I'm already in relationship, but I just want to regain my focus. I just want to get back in track. I just want to get back in line. I want that relationship with the trainer that Pastor Morrison was talking about. So we right now pray with you right where you are. Put your hand on yourself. Raise your hand before God and say, God, I love you. God, I welcome you into my heart, my mind, my body, and my spirit. And I give myself over to you right now. Have your way in me, oh God, that I may be the person that you call me to be. Help me to fulfill my goal. Help me to run my race. Help me to run on to see what the end is going to be. We pray that prayer with you and we touch and agree, believing that it's already done because you asked it in Jesus' name. God bless you and we thank you for your partnership. Before you sign off, I do want to take an opportunity to thank you. I want to thank every person under the sound of my voice. I want to thank you for all of those partners that partner with the New Calvary Baptist Church. I want to thank the creator, the creator who is the giver and the sustainer of every good and perfect gift, the God that whom none of this would be possible had it not been for God being on my side. I want to thank God for my ancestors, those that have circled around and in camp and watched rooting us on as we run our race. I want to thank them in this moment. I would be remiss, New Calvary, and those watching if I did not thank the senior pastor of this house, the angel of this house, and the person of the Reverend Dr. William Marcus Moore. Put your likes up, put your thumbs up, put your hearts up because not, it takes a strong pastor to be able to allow someone else to come in and be able to operate in the same vein of a pastor and do what we are called to do. So I am grateful, not only for Pastor Small, but I'm grateful for Lady C, for Lady Cassandra, for how she continues to pour into us and minister to us. I'm grateful for the entire Small family because you know, when I came to New Calvary over eight years ago, they welcomed me into their home, they welcomed me at their table, and they welcomed me in what it was they were doing, not only as a ministry, but as a family, and I am eternally grateful. I would be remiss if I did not thank God for my parents, Reverend Dr. Stephen Eric Harris and Dr. Beverly Boone Harris for being able to be keepers of the preacher. Not only that, but when I couldn't get ends to wave at each other, they're always there to put something else in my pocket or they're always there to help fill up my tank or they're always there to be able to continue to motivate me to run on to see what the end is going to be. I thank God for my sister and my extended family, my brother-in-law, my nieces, all those uh, that continue to root me on that are in my family. I want to thank you, New Calvary. I want to take an opportunity to thank the 26 ministries of the New Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you for trusting Pastor Small, and thank you for trusting him to trust me to assist in making this mission go forward. Thank you for every ministry leader. Thank you for every ministry member. I want to specifically thank the associate ministers of New Calvary Baptist Church. I thank you for sharing the weight with me. I thank you for journeying with me. I thank you for allowing me to make mistakes. I thank you for allowing me to, to shoulder this with me and allowing me to just be Byron. And thank you for understanding. I want to thank all the On The Move partners. I told y'all I was going to shout you out. All of the On The Move partners from Facebook Live as we journey for health and wellness, as we are winning with wellness and winter, as we are focusing on our health and wellness. Thank you for partnering with me as we continue in our wellness journey. To all of the other churches and pastors who have been a part of my spiritual formation, I say thank you. First Baptist Church Berkeley, Shiloh Baptist Church, First Shiloh of Mechanicsville, Victory for the World Church, UCC, and Grace United Methodist Church in Seattle, Washington. Thank you for allowing me to journey and to get my footing. I got to thank God for the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University because you showed me my vocation. You showed me my voice. 
my vocar in the Latin, the vocation, what I'm called to do. Virginia Union, you showed me that. But then I gotta thank Seattle University, School of Theology and Ministry, because you're helping me to cultivate my vocation. You're helping me to grow in that space. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. Last, but definitely not least, I wanna thank my accountability partners. My accountability partners are those people who see me on my worst day, who wrestle with me with theology. They wrestle with me on staying focused. They push me when I don't feel like going on. They listen to me complain. They listen to me moan when I don't think anybody else is willing to listen. So I got to thank my pastor, the Reverend Dr. William Marcus Small. He's stuck closer to me than a brother. When I wanted to give up, he told me that I could keep running. I thank God for my pastor. I thank God for all of my accountability partners. You will never know the times that I wanted to give up or give in. And they kept telling me you could keep going. I thank God for Proctor Beer. I thank God for Troy Carr in Seattle. I thank God for Jamar Jones. I thank God for Hugo Morrison and Lady Tanika. Because every time I feel like it's overwhelming, they encamp around me and they keep rooting me on, not because of me, but because they see the God in me. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Thank you so much. New Calvary, we got more race to run. And I am excited to run on to see what the end is going to be. This is your favorite executive pastor of the New Calvary Baptist Church, wishing you well and thanking you for the five years of love and excited about seeing where Dr. Small and God will continue to lead us into the future. So right now, I want you to pray the prayer of benediction with me. God, we love you. And God, we thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for all that our eyes have seen and our ears have heard on this morning. We thank you for the gift in Pastor Hugo Morrison. Continue to permeate and saturate into his spirit, oh God. Pour into him all that he has poured out so that he may be restored and rejuvenated so that he can continue to lead where you've called him. But God, we ask that you don't stop there. Continue to hold the New Calvary Baptist Church in the hollows of your hand. All of our partners, oh God, hear our cry and hearken your ear to our plea. And we will be forever mindful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Now unto God who is able to keep you from falling and will present you faultless before God's presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. We say together, amen, amen, and amen. Put your lights up and give my God some praise.